Hello, this is Ketra or Ketura, and welcome to my channel. Hello lovelies and welcome back to another video. Today's video is March's Junk Journal Divas Facebook um, kind of mixed media prompt project. Um, I already started on day two. I didn't video it because I wasn't feeling well, but I uh, want to show you the day two and then we're gonna work on day three but before I start I want to thank you guys for your wonderful comments and I remember on the last video I asked for a prompt not a prompt sorry uh, kind of a, a word or a, a saying to kind of capture the thoughts of this one and I want to give a shout out to Terry LaRue she suggested to put here kitty kitty and I got some wonderful ideas and, and comments, but this seemed to be appropriate with them kind of looking in concern. And I mean, you can take it the way you want to take it. So thank you so much, Terry LaRue. I appreciate your input. Oh, yes, also I did finish the cover. Um, so I basically put some black, I, I fiddled with it a little bit. I put some black paint down, then I put silver on top, and then I got a little I'm not really sure. I kind of just messed around going back and forth with some black and silver and I love the cover in itself. Like you could, I think you could totally just frame that piece. I'll have to say so far, that's one of my favorite pieces I've done as far as mixed media art so far. So I feel like I am seeing some growth here and I hope you guys continue to play with your art supplies, whatever it is you're doing, continue continually and you will see some growth as well. So I went ahead and did day two, and I drew, sorry guys, tear rip, bubble wrap, and embossing powder. I don't have any embossing powder, so I went ahead and just did some glitter. And of course I used art glitter glue and just kinda, I don't know, asymmetric writing, so to speak, and then put the glitter down. You know, kudos to Art Glitter Glue. And I chose this fun little uh, movie picture. Again, I don't know what it's from. And I chose the quote, live in the moment. I also belong to another wonderful group called PM Artist Studios or Makers of Mixed Media Art and Artists. And they do a color combo every month, challenge yourself. And I went ahead and did a little play practicing with the color combo and it was lime green, purple, and raspberry. And I think I did okay with the raspberry. I had to kind of mix my own color a little bit because I didn't have that paint color per se. And I used the purple to go along with the prompt, tear rip, so I used some tissue paper and I used the bubble wrap for some kind of texture in the background. And I used like a card and made some marks and drew some circles. And I thought it looked pretty basic, but good. I didn't want to go any further. I think I probably could build on it a little more, but for now I think I'm gonna leave it and let it sit. And of course, if I want to um, add more to it, I can. So we're gonna work on today's spread. Oops, there's something stuck. Depending on what's going on, I may work just on this page or I may do a double spread. I'm not sure. But let's go ahead and get into the box. Let's see what we're going to draw here. And I think I went ahead and, yeah, here we go. Let's go ahead and draw. So we got pattern paper. Now I was thinking about this and I was thinking, is it like sewing pattern paper or... It could just be any pattern paper that you have in your stash. Let's mix these up again. Okay, what else we got? Ooh, stencil. Wonderful. And for the third one, it is staples. Wow, okay, I love doing staples. So let me gather some supplies and we'll get started on day three. All right, so I thought I'd bring you along with my thought process. Um, I think lately I've been trying to choose my focal point first before I get started with the other ideas. So this is one, a uh, lady standing on her front porch. 
and she's got a scarf over her head and I really love the blue and the flowers in the front. It's very rustic and it looks like her property or wherever her house is a little bit run down, but, but on the other hand, it's beautified with flowers using what they have with the means that are available to them. So that's kind of what um, had me have an idea for the sewing pattern. For me, that's what I'm taking for pattern paper. The other thought was this, it's a stagecoach with, um, I'm, again, I don't know the movie, um, them traveling and I thought, well, this could be like a map or a property or something like them you know, could represent the the road that they're on traveling somewhere. So that's what gave me an idea for that. <clears throat> this is a little uh, photo of just the family. They're looking a little concerned. Um, but I don't think I'll use this one. It's a little small, but I liked the idea. So these are the two that I was thinking. And then as I was thinking more, I'm going to go ahead and do this. Just kind of representing, you know, kind of with the theme of this series is use what you have and try not to feel like you got to go and buy a lot of art supplies just to have a play with what you have based on your means and availability, you know, the money that you have to use to create and, you know, which kind of brings in making your own clothes which I guess now, you know, fabric is pretty expensive. It used to be more of a economical way to get clothes to make your own. But anyway, that's kind of the theme. And then I was thinking, so I definitely gonna use the stencil, but then in using this staples, yes, but I may switch it out for the other, one of the other prompts is red. Cause I was thinking of keeping it kind of, um, limited color palette but there is red in here so I don't know I'll go ahead and keep staples I'm definitely going to use the pattern paper and this um, focal point um, let me have a think a little bit more on how I'm going to apply this and other materials I may want to use for this spread all right so I went ahead I'm just going to work on this panel but I'm going to have this pattern paper kind of go into the next page why not so put that down first then I'm gonna go ahead and I kind of trimmed around a little bit to make the picture a little smaller because my thoughts were is to keep simplicity you know simple means and all of that that's kind of my theme for this uh, what do you call it uh, mixed media journal page, so to speak. So I'm gonna go ahead and use uh, matte medium um, to glue this down first. I have no idea, it's just my thoughts, whether it works or not. You'll get to come along with me and maybe I can some, learn some new, new techniques or discover something really cool. And this brush I usually use for glue and I'm sure y'all have a, a brush that you use and this is pretty thin paper so I'll go ahead and glue this down and be right back okay I have that down I went ahead and switched my brush because that one I might have ruined it I'm gonna glue this one down on the back first and then put it about right here, I think. I can't remember if I mentioned it. I went ahead and switched out the staples prompt for the red prompt because I, I want to do just a splash of red in here to bring out the red in the photo. So I'm going to go with my heat tool and get this dried up so we can... I think I want to do the stencil next, but I'm not sure. I feel like I need to build this page up a little more, so I will ponder that as I dry this page. And be right back with you. Okay, sorry guys, I got a phone call and got to talking, and then I started painting, and then I forgot for a second that I was filming this. So what I did is I took some white paint, 
and kind of tried to dry brush it on here over the pattern just to build some interest. And then I took my um, paint rag, sprayed some water, maybe you guys do this already, just like this, and kind of tried to feather out some of the, like here where it says simplicity, I was trying to kind of wipe away some of it to make it more feathery or, you know, blended, just to kind of still show the pattern part. Let me zoom you in a little bit. Okay. So I still wanted to see the pattern part, but I really wanted to build up on the page. I also tore some book pages and some like uh, packing paper. I was thinking of somehow incorporating this to bring more te texture and I can paint over that again. Somehow was my thoughts a little bit, but I was fiddling with it when I was talking on the phone and I was like, that looks kind of weird or disconnected. I'm not sure because at the end I want to put my stencil, which I think I'll use this stencil just in places with red. So I was trying to keep my colors pretty basic, but build on the page. But, you know, again, it's my journal. If it doesn't look okay or whatever, it's okay. We're playing, right? Experimenting with ideas. And, um, yeah, so I think I'm just going to... I was think my thoughts were is trying to keep going with this little patch here. Sorry about that, guys. You know, this uh, drywall patch or stucco patch that was peeling away. I was going to try and carry that over you know, from here, and maybe, ooh, as I'm talking to you, I could use some of this color and carry it over, you know, as part of the picture. Does that make sense? So what I'll do, is try to get the eye to go up that way, I guess. I thought I had another piece of brown paper. Go ahead and just do that. I'll mix up some of this color the best I can. Oh, here we go. And just slightly, maybe, not too much paint. Dry brush it on, wipe some of it off. Maybe have that come up there. So, you know, your eye kind of goes that way. Let's see, I'm gonna glue this down, mix up the paint, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so I glued it down. I'm gonna use my heat tool. And what did I do with the paint? Oh yes, I don't have to mix paint. Because I have this metallic. I know it's kind of sheer, which I think is, um, or translucent, I guess is what you'd want to say. So I can use this. It's pretty similar. So let me dry this up and we'll kind of dry brush this up and see if we can get it to follow along to make it kind of part of this photo. Okay, so let's get our paint and see what we can do here. Yeah, I think that's going to blend really nicely. Yay. Um, just use my finger there to just kind of blend it a little bit. Kind of. some dark edges here. I can come in with some, I guess I didn't really, really need too much paint. Might make this a little bit darker in here. Let's see if I can just put it onto here. See, if we can see there's no real break in the, the paper. All right, guys, sorry. All right, I'm back and I'm sorry, I had to take that phone call and actually while I was talking, I did this. So let me just show you what I did. Kind of like it, kind of does kind of move in from the photo. You can't really tell, but you can, but kind of like it. It's different. Um, one of the things 
I've been working on is to get my collage pieces to more meld into the background. So I'm going to keep that as far as moving your eye. And I think I'm going to just go ahead and try this stencil with some red. I don't know, you know, if that's going to be the last of it. Just to pick up the red from the flowers on the sleeve. Just maybe not, maybe do it kind of lightly and not go too heavy handed. Um, just in these areas, maybe just, I don't know. So let me get the red. I think I have it. More raspberry red. Let me get the. Okay, found it. It is just scarlet red. I'm going to take a makeup sponge, <clears throat> dab some of, it off, some of it off here. I think I'm just going to go around very lightly, maybe. Hopefully, this isn't going to look dumb because you never know. And we might as well bring it down here and down here. Try to get it in the grooves of the stencil instead of on the stencil itself. Okay, ready? Let's try it. Okay, not bad. I think I'm going to leave it. I think that kind of goes one way this way and this way. I'm not sure. If I know technically there's no rules in art, but you kind of want to learn to make, you know, decent art that moves your eye around. That being pretentious, guys. Anyway. <laughs> All right. So I think that's looking pretty good so far. So what are my prompts? I'll make sure I fulfilled those pattern paper, stencil, and lid. So we got those, so we don't have to worry about that. So anything else we want to add? I think I'm going to do some stamps. Um, maybe see if I can just do a little bit here and down here. Um, I'll be right back with some stamp ideas. Okay, so I got this block stamp. It's from Stampin' Up! from 2006. And where's the lid? This little stamp pad that's um, Versal, Versa Magic. I'm just going to try this. I was going to try it off camera to see if it was going to be a dumb idea. Same color on the paint. I just kind of really wanted to try. This. I just want to see if it's going to make much of a difference. Even if it's on the edge, maybe. I don't know that these block stamps don't do very well with this ink um, much. So that didn't work. So I'll be right back, guys. Just thought I'd try it. Kind of want to use some distress ink, but I'll find. Maybe we'll go with uh, Walnut Stain and try it really quick. I have two for some reason. All right, let's try this pebble. Pebble looking to me looks like pebbles, so let's just see. It doesn't really show up on the acrylic very well. Maybe you guys knew that, or it could just be the stamp. It's me. Never mind. It's working down here. Let's try it again on this side. Just try the paper thing just here so it goes down a bit. I don't know, it's okay. I'm gonna put it right here just to kind of finish off the pattern. To make sure it kind of is cohesive, I guess. Maybe we can. Uh, wash it out. I don't know. If I don't like it, I can just paint over it, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Right, not liking that stamp, but we're just going to leave it for now. Mm, let's try a bit of wash out since it's on acrylic. I don't know. I know the oxides are water-soluble. 
don't know that the, oh, they are a little bit. Okay, perfect. This will work. Probably because it's not quite dry yet. And we can just bring it in down here for a little bit of interest. Okay, that's a little better. Not really what I had in mind in my, in my head, but I'm gonna go with it now. I feel like I want to just do this now a little bit I keep it over here okay let's put the lid back on bring that down across make it I guess it's grungy I guess vintage it up a little bit All right, okie dokie. I feel like I need something else, so I'm gonna walk away for a while, come back to you with fresh eyes and see if this is gonna be done or not. I definitely want to um, make the word simplicity stand out a little bit. But, yeah, it's been fun though. Okay, I'll draw you in. I'll take a minute or two or three. See what you think for, take a look at that. I think it's all, we're almost there, I think. Um, so I'll be back with you shortly. Okay, lovelies, I'm back and it's the next day. Cause you know, life happens and you know, so I was thinking I'm going to make some marks. I'm going to use some of this brown. The marks I thought I'd use, I have this square thing. If you want to know what came in here, you can ask me in the comments below and I'll tell you. It's kind of interesting. I thought I'd use this comb to do some interesting things. So let's see if this will kind of tie some stuff up. And I think this piece is done. I don't know. Never. Let's try and see how this works with the comb. I'm just going to brush some paint on it. Has anybody used a comb for mark making? thought I would just um, try it. Here. Yeah, it's subtle. I'll show you in, up close in a minute. Let me just play around with it a little bit more. Might just press C. Oh, that's kind of cool. Okay, I just, let me zoom you in here. There, you can kind of see. This is kind of a cool thing. I like it. That's another thing is um, finding stuff around the house you can use for marks. Okay, maybe I can do some here, kind of like that effect. Ooh, there you go. That's neat. I like that. Let's do it on the other side, but we'll do it up here. Let's get both sides, I think. Something like that. Okay. So what did I do? I just dragged it, didn't I? Yeah, that works. I think. Is it kind of a maybe we'll do a little bit over here. Okay, I'm gonna leave that. And then I'm gonna try my squares, my little squares. I 
I don't think I need to do the whole. Oh darn it, I did it on the wrong side. So we'll just, I meant to do it on this side. Um, where was I thinking? Um, hmm. All right, here we go. Interesting. Gives it some, I guess, maybe architectural lines of some sorts. That's where, what I think, anyway. Okay. Oh no, here comes Eris. Here comes Eris, guys. This is my black and white cat. Ah! Um, we'll put some here and here. Kind of looks like a pattern. Hi, Eris. Knocking stuff over as cats do. Okay, I think that works. Now I'm gonna get in with my China marker. Let me find, I had it, oh, oh yes. Finally found my China marker, my favorite marking tool. Let me zoom you out just a little bit. I think I'm just gonna go I feel like I need, maybe, I should let that dry, but let me let this dry. I'll take my heat tool and maybe go around. I was thinking of, I don't want to put my hand in. I don't know if I can go over this simplicity a little bit and kind of make it stand out. So you can read it a little better-ish. So I'll go ahead and do that, let that dry. Probably go around here a little bit. Just kind of um, maybe do this around the edges. For some reason, I kind of like that. Put a little frame around it, kind of pulls everything in. I think that's what that does. It just looks really good on the eye. So I'll go ahead and heat tool the heat dry this and be back. Okay, I just used my heat gun. And so since this is a China marker, I went over this, it goes on really good because it's warm. Maybe you already knew that, but with a China marker, if you want it to glide more and not be so sticky, heat your paper first and then use your China marker. So I figured I'd take, my, take advantage of it and go over the letters while the paper is warm. Do you like that snappy noise with a china marker? I kind of like it. Might bug some people. Okay, simplicity. So I was like, mm, maybe it needs a sentiment, but I think that is the sentiment and I'm gonna leave it at simplicity. And then go around these edges, I think. I don't know, I kind of like this, but I kind of like this too for some reason with my collage pieces. Giving it a border like it's framed in the journal page, I guess. My thoughts, but. I'll go ahead and finish this up on the side. On the side, gosh, sorry guys. Um, finish this on the borders. Kinda make a border and then show you the final results. All right, there you go. I think I'm gonna call this one done. Let me just bring this up to the camera and you can kind of see the details, which are pretty neat if you look at it. There's a little bit going on. I don't think it's too much, but I think it's just enough to give your eye and brain something to look at and decide for yourself maybe what this piece means to you.
I quite like it. It's different. Um, definitely different than most of the pieces I do. Well, I don't even know. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this prompt challenge um, series. Again, I hope you're playing with your art supplies. I hope you're not being afraid to just use what you have. You will be amazed what some cool things you'll come up with. All right, guys, until the next video, I will see you next time. Again, thank you so much for stopping by. Love you guys.